Hello everyone and welcome to webinar Learn how to pipe it like a pro, organized by Biosystemica and Lotrich Meteorology. Today we will focus on correct manual pipetting of small and medium volumes and discuss how can incorrect pipetting affect your results. Best pipetting practices will be presented by Nico Cemajer, expert from company Lotrich Meteorology, which is one of the leading companies in the region in the field of meteorology. I am Jana Rjavec, I did my PhD in biotechnology and I'm a product manager at Biosystemica, which specializes in development of software solutions for researchers and laboratories, and has also organized several international workshops and webinars in molecular biology and qPCR. I will be your moderator today. I would also like to mention supporters of this webinar, Gilson Incorporated, Jean Quanwe, Michael W. Fafo, and Splice Coffee Break News for Life Scientists. We have answered all the questions that we have received during the live webinar broadcast and you will be able to see them at the end of this video. If you have any questions while watching this video, send them to our panelist and he will respond to you via email. Now let me introduce our speaker. Nico Cemajer is head of mass field and he is also responsible for liquid handling devices. He has more than 10 years of experience on the service and calibration of medical and pharmaceutical devices. He has given numerous lectures about the correct use of piston-operated volumetric pipettes. He will also answer your questions during the webinar. Hi, my name is Nico and I will demonstrate how to handle pipettes properly so you don't make mistakes which, especially in life science, cost a lot of money. We will start with pipetting techniques, discuss the most common mistakes made by users, continue with calibration and conclude with the short tips on maintenance. First, we will look at the types of piston pipettes. Basically, we know two types of piston pipettes, air displacement and positive displacement. Main difference between them is purpose of use. Air displacement pipettes are recommended for pipetting aqua samples, while positive displacement pipettes are recommended for problematic samples. For example, if you have problem with viscous and dense liquids. When we use air displacement pipettes, we must pay attention to the immersion depth. Immersion depends on the volume. In the table you can see recommended immersion depth. For example, if we pipette volumes between 100 microliters to 1000 microliters, the recommended depth is between 2 and 4 millimeters. Now I will you demonstrate uh, forward pipetting. Uh, hold your pipette like this and never so tightly like that. Because if you hold your pipette so tightly, we transfer heat from hand to the pipette and the result, the result of that will be lower aspirated volume. Uh, Attach tip to the pipette. Also, before you start, you must pre prevent your pipette tip. Just aspirate some volume and dispense it back in the original place. Press the button to the first stop, hold your pipette vertically, immerse pipette tip into the liquid, slowly and smoothly release button to the rest position, place the pipette tip and against the wall under angle 10 to 45 degrees, and press the button to the first stop. Wait one second and then the press button to the second stop position. This blow up stroke remove any uh, remaining sample in the end of the tube. Let's do it again. Press the button to the first stop position. Immerse tip to the liquid, slowly and smoothly release the button, place the pipette tip end against the wall under the 
angle 10 to 45 degrees. Press button to the first stop position. Wait one second, then to the second stop position. This blow up stroke removes any remaining sample from the tip. Place the tip to the pipette. Immerse the pipette tip to the liquid, not under the angle, not too deep. If you put your pipette tip tip too deep and under the angle, you will get bigger volume. Just like that. And now I will demonstrate to you the reverse mode repeating. Press button to the second stop position, not to the first, like we did it before, to the second. Immerse the pipe tip into the liquid slowly and smoothly. Release button. Wait one second so that liquid has time to move up into the tips. Dispense liquid by pressing down button to the first stop position. Here is always some liquids always remain in the tip. So if you want to continue with the pipetting the same liquid, you can just aspirate it the same liquid again. If there is some drop on the end of the tip, just wipe it against the wall. Like that. Let's do it again. Press the button to the second stop position. Immerse the tip into the liquid. Slowly and smoothly release the button. Wait one second, so that liquid has time to move up into the tip. Dispense liquid by pressing down button to the first stop position. So liquid always rem remains in the pipe at tip. So if you want to continue with the pipe at the same liquid, just aspirate the same liquid again. If there is some drop on the end of the tip, just wipe it against the wall. Now I will quickly show you how to pipe it on the microfiter plate. I recommend using pipetting assistant to avoid mistakes when pipetting on the microfiter plate. Here I use plater pipetting assistant, which will light up one well after another according to the plan which I prepared. Here I use electronic pipette. If there is a drop on the end of the tip, just wipe it against the wall. Nico, do you use the same pipetting technique if you are using a multi-channel pipette? Yes, I use the same pipetting technique when I'm using the multi-channel pipette. It's com completely the same. And what about if uh, they're using uh, filters, uh, tips with filters? 
Uh, the technique is completely the same. So uh, you're basically using uh, tips with filters if you want to prevent contamination. Yes, uh, filter tips are usually used when you want to prevent cross-contamination from uh, your sample to the pipette or pipette to the pipette or sample to the sample. It is very easy, easy as a pie. Here is the summary of the most common pipetting mistakes and solution how to prevent them. Maybe something to pin on your lab door. So piston pipettes require regular calibration and service to maintain their accuracy and precision. This should be done at least once per year. Other time intervals may be specified by users depending upon frequency of use, number of user of the pipette, aggressive nature of liquid to delivered, and acceptable maximum permissible error established by user. Also perform the internal testing at regular intervals, for example, every three months. Piston pipette is dismantled for cleaning and visual inspection and reassembled in accordance with the operation manual. And how do you test if your pipette is leaking? Nominal volume of the pipette is aspirated into the pipette tips while the pipette is held vertically. The pipette, pipette tips and the test liquid should all have the same temperature. After one minute, if no drop has formed on the tip, the pipette does not leak. Thank you, Nico. That brings us to the end of the demonstration part. I would like to let you know that we have Gilsa's Guide to Pipetting, info about Plater Pipetting Assistant and Lutrich Meteorology handouts available during the live broadcast. If you would like to receive any of those handouts, please send me an email. We have answered the following questions that we have received during the live broadcast. Feel free to read through and if we didn't answer your question today, please send an email to Nico since he is a true expert in this area. Before we conclude, I would like to let you know that Biosystemica will release SciNote, an open source scientific notebook in 2016, which will be also featured on Kickstarter in mid-November, so you are all invited to follow us on www.scinote.net. On behalf of Biosystemica, I would like to thank our speaker for sharing his knowledge with us and Lotrich Meteorology for expertise and content contribution. We would also like to thank our supporters, Gilson Incorporated for the support and the Pipetman and Pipettes, Jink One by Michael W. Fafel for supporting this webinar and Splice Coffee Break News for Life Scientist for sharing the news. I would also like to thank you that you watched this webinar despite the busy schedule. Goodbye.